Hey guys, Rob Sucraft here with Three Storm Fitness. I'm gonna do another rant today. I took a few notes. Actually, this is just basically a giant list of songs. I'll get to that in a second. Um, I want to talk today about about what kind of music you should listen to in the gym. Um, this is something that's been discussed for a very long time by a million people. Like most of the stuff I talk about, this is just kind of my take on it. Um, music is something that seems to be, well, first of all, it's very personal to people in the first place, but it's also kind of a point of um, contention often in, in the gym. Uh, you, you see a lot of people that, uh, well, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, let me just first kind of address some of the, I won't go into like the science behind music, but I will address that, there, that music can, in fact, have a uh, significant role in uh, in your your performance in the gym to a to a degree. Um, there are there have been some studies, and I'm not going to cite them because honestly, I can't I can't remember what they are. But I, I know I've read legitimate uh, research on things like beats per minute and how it's correlated to performance on a lot of like cardio, like aerobics think about jogging like there are songs like if you go on pandora or spotify or whatever and you can find like jogging music and that's music that kind of meets the ideal beats per minute to help keep you going um and that is also uh my wife is i can't remember if i've said it before my wife leslie she's a uh, she's a music therapist so and specifically she's a neurological music therapist nmt i think i'm saying that right so she does a lot of work with folks um, I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty much her bread and butter. Uh, so she does a lot of work with folks with, say, like neurological disorders or disabilities that can't go from like, you know, cross midline, things like that. Uh, Parkinson's, for instance, she, she could play a beat and help people with their gait while they're walking and, and, and things like that. And it's really fascinating stuff. So there's a lot of real science, evidence-based uh, legitimacy to music and, and again, performance in the gym. But it really just kind of depends on where you're trying to perform. Um, I have a lot of opinions on that. And this is kind of, we're, we're leaving, if you consider that to be hard science, we're, <laughs> if you don't consider it to be hard science, then just either turn this off or strap in because we're leaving that now. We're going to go into Rob Science. Uh, bro science at best, but most of what I do in the gym is uh, around, it's kind of revolves around resistance training, uh, lifting weights, we'll just put it that way, and you know, you have the stereotypical gym music of, you know, the hard rock or the gangster rap that you have to have on to get pumped, and uh and you know, there's there's folks out there who they can't listen, they can't work out in the gym without like some sort of driving beat playing or some sort of you know. It kind of depends on the. It's a generational thing, but you know, '80s hair band or it's got to be metal or it's got to be this crap that. Well, it, it, it's an opinion. Again, this is all, all my opinion, but it's got to be stuff. It's got to be this. I'm not saying. Hair bands crap. That's a look, forget forget about the crap thing. It's I was gonna start talking about there's I don't even I can't even name bands, but there's music that, that plays sometimes in in the gym that I'm just like I don't understand the appeal. Uh, but anyways, whatever it works for some people. But my whole point of, of saying that is that these are folks who it's almost like I would almost equate it to like pre workout, you know where. They, they depend so much on music. It's one thing to love music and use it as a tool to help get through your workouts. It's another to depend on it to the point where somebody, I've literally seen people leave the gym because they couldn't stand what was playing on the radio. That is stupid. That is absolutely insane. First of all, earbuds. and <laughs> Make a $5 investment in some earbuds if, the, if it really means that much to you. Secondly, there should be no external characteristic other than, well, an injury would be, I guess, more internal. But there should be no external uh, force that pushes you from the gym 
uh, you know, if you like have pre-workout in your bag normally, but you forgot it or you ran out or something, and now you can't work out. Like, it sounds like I'm making that up, but I've seen it happen before, and it's so stupid. I don't want to depend on anything in order to do that. Like, most of the time when I'm working out, I listen to, uh, I listen to, uh, shoot, I'm trying to think of the, dang it. I'm trying to think of the, uh, there was a TED Talk I heard a while back called, uh, um, it was on basically combining combining something that, that you don't really want to do, which is exercise for me a lot of time, I'll admit, and something you do want to do. Like, for me, is listening to like an audiobook. So I'll listen to audiobooks while I work out, or I'll listen to podcasts or whatever. Most of the time, that's what I'm doing. I'll try to find the name of the uh, speaker. It's just escaping me right now. Um, but anyways, I'll put it in the description. Uh... So my whole point is I'm trying to like tackle two birds and one stone while I exercise. I'm doing something I like to do while I do something that I, I sometimes like to exercise, but a lot of times I don't. So I'm kind of mixing the two. It's like why I watch a bad movie while I'm putting laundry away. Um, kind of mix those two things. Or uh, have a drink while I'm mowing the lawn. That, that, that sort of thing. I wish I could remember what the heck it's called. Anyways, I'll, I'll, I'll list it. Um, all that to say, I do... There are times when I do want to hear music. In fact, most of the time I want to hear music, I just sort of, I save it. It's like a, I save it for like a, um, a tool when I really need it. Think of, I, I use music more like, I guess like how power lifters use nose torque, you know, like, like ammonia, uh, smelling salts kind of stuff. Like I use it when I feel I need it. Or when I just feel like, screw it, I'm going to listen to some, some tunes. Um, and, and I want to talk about Kind of back to what we were talking about with the beats, beats per minute and like it's got to be hard rock, it's got to pump you up, all that stuff. I could be wrong here, but I don't believe there's any, I don't, well, there may be some resistance training um, research out there. Resistance training, like again, lifting weights and music and what kind of effect it has. In fact, I'm sure there's something out there. But I don't believe that it is as strong as a, uh, as strong as a relationship as it is to more like cardio type exercises. I think lifting weights, you know, you're 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 more reliant on on technique <clears throat> and you know getting in the zone and all that sort of all that all, all those true cliches. Um, it, it, I, I don't see how it would really matter what the beat is of the song um, in terms of uh, I mean because no one's going to be doing you know a three rep max to a certain cadence. You know, it's not. It, it just doesn't, that doesn't happen. No one ever does that. Yet people treat these sort of like, you've got to have something upbeat. i got to have something that's going to pump me up. And I get that. I've already said I get that. Like, and I'm, I'm guilty of that. I'm not guilty, but I'm, I'm, uh, I've, I've, I, you have to use some upbeat stuff sometimes myself to just kind of snap myself out. But again, I try not to rely on it. Um, I usually use it for like, I'm going to hit like a PR or something. Um, so again, I'm like using music as a tool. And by the way, I haven't really noticed this. I'm just spitballing here, but I haven't really noticed a difference in, you know, when I put some heavy hitting song on, as far as my numbers go, all I found is that it just kind of gets me under the bar faster. I'll put off the, the rest in between the set um, longer sometimes if I'm not feeling it and I don't have a song on, but I might be able to put on, uh, I've made a list of, a huge list of songs here. I'll get to them in a second, but I might be able to put on like, you know, white zombie, more human than human. I'm like, yes. And I'll just get under the bar. So it just gets me under the bar faster. It helps, it helps me, stops me from procrastinating, but I haven't noticed a difference in being able to lift like five more pounds when I have a, a metal tune on or whatever. Um, maybe you found otherwise, but I, I haven't. I, don't, I think it's kind of, I think it's, I think it's nonsense. But whatever gets you under the bar faster, gets you training, you know, if you have to use it, use it, you know, and enjoy it. Uh, so, I also want to take kind of a different approach to it. Most of the tunes that I do listen to, again, for like PRs and stuff, if I do, if I feel I just need to like, just have something drive me under the bar or whatever, you know, I'll, I'll, I, it usually ends up being some sort of gangster rap tune or or metal or hard rock or whatever. Um, you, you kind of the stuff you would expect to hear in the gym and you wouldn't think twice about somebody listening to it. 
Um, but there's most of the time, if I'm just like kind of in a mood, uh, usually like if, if I can't get my mind right, I can't get in the zone or whatever, I put on songs that a lot of the songs I listen to, some of it's kind of more like easy listening, uh, easy listening to me, like stuff that just kind of has a, a groove to it and I'm just kind of enjoy it, generally speaking. Um, just sort of makes things a little nicer in the gym for me. Most people don't share a lot of my same, <laughs> the same taste that I have, at least across the board. Uh, but a lot of the songs would absolutely get me kicked out of a gym if I try to play it over the loudspeaker. Um, and these are tunes that, and I'll, again, I have a list of like examples here, but these are songs that, um, whether it's like nostalgic or that just has a particular type of melody that really kind of hits me, like makes, like basically triggers some sort of emotional response. Not that I'm going to sit there and cry, but like, it just puts me in a different state. It almost like resets me. And allows me to just kind of, just kind of go. I, I, it, it, it takes all of whatever the anxieties of the of the of the the workout are, or or my stress in life or whatever, and it kind of just resets my head a little bit. And a lot of these songs are like slower. They're kind of like cheesy. <laughs> a lot of people would find them to be. Um, but you know, one of the reasons I decided to make this video because I, I just read the book Relentless by Tim Grover which is a pretty good book. Um, I won't get into the details of the book, but there's a tiny little blurb where he talks about, I think he's talking about training guys at the free throw line or training guys, situations that like you have to, um, I, I, I don't remember exactly what the context was, but basically the gist was he doesn't necessarily play heavy metal to get the guys pumped up when they're, you know, have to train for like clutch, clutch shots and things like that. He usually finds out songs that kind of bring him home, you know, songs that like really hit him, hit him deep, and uh, kind of trigger an emotional response. Again, I'm paraphrasing, and I might be getting some of that wrong, but that's the gist that I took from it. So I kind of felt a little, a little validated in, in this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wing through some. I, I put this list together in the bathroom today. This is pro could, could probably be. I don't know, 50 times longer, but I was, I think, I think I was on the toilet for like 25, 30 minutes, so I needed to get off. So this is just kind of an example of some of the songs that I like, or some of the songs that kind of do it for me, and I, I've sort of broken it down loosely. Again, this is very informal. I just threw this together. Like I said, I'm missing, I'm sure you guys are going to be like, first of all, what's that doing on there? Secondly, why isn't such and such on there? You know, this is not... A, a complete list of every song that I like. I think my Pandora, Pandora radio is like, I have something ridiculous, like five, fifty, four hundred thumbs up or something. Um, so I like a lot of music. But anyways, uh, here's an example of like the, I guess we'll call them like harder songs, like your your classic tunes that tunes that you would you would expect to walk into a gym. Um, a, a free weight gym <laughs> and and not necessarily be like what are these guys listening to uh, you might be offended by some of the language but whatever um so uh from like the hip-hop i love hip-hop uh especially older stuff whatever that even means to you i'm not talking like cool herc older stuff although i do like some of that but like you know a lot of it's like late 80s early 90s mid 90s um like the g-funk era that kind of thing so this would be stuff uh, in no particular order. I got like Dead Wrong by uh, Notorious B.I.G. Eminem's on there. New York State of Mind, Nas. Uh, the Dig, that's a, um, uh, that is a People Under the Stairs. People Under the Stairs, if you haven't checked them out, if you like hip-hop, they're, they're not super well-known, but they put out tons of good stuff. Uh, Redefinition by Black Star. It's um, Talib Kweli and, uh, and uh, Most Def. Pretty much anything off the diary, Scarface. Um, P is Free, that's uh, KRS-One. Sometimes I like to get like a little, I don't love this stuff all the time, but every now I like small doses of like UGK or 8-Ball and MG, like Pimpin' My Own Rhyme. I love that song for some reason. It's terrible, but I love it. Basically anything produced by Easy Mo B or Ant Banks 
Uh, again, I love Biggie, so Kick in the Door is another great one. Give me the loot, Ready to Die, any of that stuff. Uh, like, I love the old Snoop Doggy Style, one of my favorite albums. Shiznit, G's and Hustlers. If you want to throw, we could throw uh, Herbie Hancock's Rocket in there. Um, I think that's technically a hip-hop song. So, those are just some examples of songs I might put off. I'm about to try to go for a PR or whatever. And I'm just trying to like get myself under the bar to, to, to hit it. Uh, more along the lines of, of rock. Uh, I would say, like I always said, More Human Than Human, White Zombie. Walk, uh, Pantera, that's hard to argue with. The Zoo, I could listen to The Zoo all the time. The first like minute of The Scorpions. That song is great. Symphony of Destruction, The Megadeth, After the Flesh. Uh, it's sort of a random one, but I don't even know. I think it's off the Crow soundtrack. It's uh, My Life with a Thrill Kill Cult. Know Your Enemy, lots of Rage Against the Machine stuff. Dragon Attack by Queen. I, I love uh, I love Jethro Tull. I know it's going to piss off a lot of uh, Metallica fans. I'm a Metallica fan too, but I love Jethro Tull. My dad used to listen to tons of it and uh, kind of rubbed off on me. But Locomotive Breath, Hunting Girl, Songs from the Wood even. Um, Space Lord, I love the song Space Lord by Monster Magnet. <laughs> I don't know what it is about that tune. The Stroke. Got to throw some Billy Squire in there, and uh, hand clapping song, which is kind of slower, but there's something driving about it by the meters, the funky meters. Hand clapping song. A lot of folks have used that in um, in hip hop tunes. I saw the Roots uh, perform that one time. Anyways, uh, let's get into some like easier listening songs. Not necessarily easy listening in the sense that you'd like, you know, not like the the Storm or something like that, <laughs> something that would play on a radio station like that. But songs that aren't necessarily like gonna pump you up necessarily not you might walk into a gym and be like huh what's this eh. <laughs> so I got gotcha, you Joe Tex I love that tune um, dance to the music I got I, so anything tons of sly sly stuff uh, sly and the family stone dance to the music that's a song like I've heard thousands of times but for some reason I'll just never turn it off uh, if you want me to stay it's another sly song um, Super creepy bass line. I got a story about that, but I won't get into it. It's not it doesn't shine a good light on me um, <laughs> uh, Lost everything I've ever loved. That's uh, David Ruffin. I love David Ruffin uh, t Pretty much anything by Tijuana uh, Herb Alpert, Tijuana Brass or just Herb Alpert solo stuff like the work song Mexican Shuffle um, Together someday. It's a Hepcat tune. I love Hepcat kind of like a ska jazz uh, band a little bit of reggae a little bit of old school like soul sound. Uh, Chica Mi Tipo, uh, Sublime, pretty much anything off of 40 Ounces to Freedom uh, album. Put it where you want it. That's a that's, again. These are like total random. To, I'm just sitting on the toilet, just like writing, just <laughs> putting the stream of consciousness. Put it where you want it. That's a Crusaders song, Jazz Crusaders. Uh, Larry Carlton's on that one. Um, Life in the Air Age, it's a Bebop Deluxe song. Bebop Deluxe, super underrated prog rock band. Uh, Use Me by Bill Withers, probably like the sickest beat of all time. I don't know, I don't know why I haven't heard like 15 hip hop songs with that beat. Like somebody's got to get on that. Um, Happy Song, it's a Victor Wooten instrumental. It, I love that tune. Uh, Tons of Stevie Ray Vaughan stuff like uh, Rude Mood, Testify, Couldn't Stand the Weather, uh, Lazy. That's a uh, Deep Purple song, kind of like if you ever heard like Four Play a Long Time by Boston. Sort of like a, in my opinion, where the intro, like the five minute intro is better than like the the, the song. It's like, I shouldn't say the song, but like when they start singing. Like I love the whole tune, but I love Lazy. That intro is killer. Uh, Richie Blackmore's a beast on that song. Uh, Why Does Love Gotta Be So Sad, Derek and the Dominoes, uh, Dwayne Allman is awesome on that, Clapton, uh, Love Don't Love Nobody, I've heard like a, a, a few versions of that, I want to say I heard a Led Zeppelin song, the one I like the most is probably James Brown on the, his blues album, Messing With the Blues, Remember, that's a Hendrix tune, not a very known Hendrix song for some reason, it's one of my favorites, probably easiest to play, it's probably the least technical Hendrix tune, but uh, The Fez, Steely Dan, love Steely Dan, uh, Sunday School by Carl Denson, Carl Denson, Tiny Universe, Carl Denson, and um, uh, Great Boy All-Stars, uh, awesome stuff, and, and it's kind of further, like, I like a lot of the, the, the jazz, soul, 
funk fusion kind of stuff, uh, just kind of jam, jammy. So like all the Carl Dentz and stuff, Lettuce, uh, Soul Live, which I think a lot of dudes from Soul Live went to Lettuce, uh, maybe vice versa, I don't know, Galactic, bands like that. All right, um, and then I, these are the songs that I wrote here, songs that would get me kicked out of the gym. All right, I'm a sucker for old instrumental surf music, but like also instrumental like surf bands playing playing like sweet kind of feel-good melodies uh like the sandals or the shadows like wonderful land i love that song by the shadows uh love the tornadoes uh a lot of joe meek's pr productions joe meek was a psychopath but i loved his uh the tornadoes tell stars like one of my favorite songs of all time uh a lot of pop jazz and like pop orchestral stuff uh Angela, which is like the theme song from Taxi. If you ever heard the whole song, it's super, it's super, um, I almost say groovy, but it is. It's like, it's, it's, I love it. I love, I could listen to that kind of crap all day. And anything like Bob James, any of his collaborators, like, uh, Dave Grusin, Earl Clue, George Benson, Grover Washington, David Sanborn, all those guys, I could, I could listen to stuff all the time. Uh, anything by George Benson, I love. Breezin, it's one of my favorite tunes. Uh, guys like Pat Metheny, Song James, uh, Lee Rittenhauer, Larry Carlton, I think I mentioned it before, he played with the Crusaders for a while. Love all that stuff. And then you got more of like some, looks like this is more like some soul stuff. I got Farewell is a Lonely Sound, Jimmy Ruffin, David's brother. Dave, Jimmy actually made it bigger, big before David did, but David made it bigger. Um, Try Me, that's another James Brown tune. Uh, Lily of the Valley, it's a Shorty Long song, I think a lot of people have done it, but Shorty Long. Uh, Hello Sunshine, Wilson Pickett's version. Patches, I love Clarence Carter, Patches, I freaking love that song, I don't know why. Uh, Proud of You by The Impressions. Uh, Bring It On Home To Me, Sam Cooke and Lou Rawls, one of my favorite tunes of all time. Uh, this song's cheesy, but I love it. Cara Mia by Jay and the Americans, I like their version. My True Story by The Jive Five. Kind of all these like little doo y bands or groups um, from like the late 50s and early 60s. Uh, Hushabye by the Mystics. Uh, God, I can think of a million other ones, but I'll, I'll, okay, I'll move on. And then you got like more like, I guess, classical songs. Even though it's not technically classical era. Actually, I mean, whatever. I'm not going to get into that. But anything by Ennio Morricone. Uh, he's like the spaghetti western master, like the composer behind... The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and um, uh, Once Upon a Time in America, uh, Jill's America, from that, I love that song, it's beautiful, Love Theme for Nada from uh, Cinema Paradiso, it's awesome, uh, just really pretty songs that, again, if you walked in the gym and somebody was about to, <laughs> somebody was listening to this stuff, you'd be like, what the hell is going on, <laughs> but whatever, it's my gym, uh, Claire de Lune, so Debussy makes beautiful music. Uh, I love Disney songs, like like the old 50s Disney tunes, just the instrument. I mean, the lyrics are nice, they're pretty, but the the, the music, my wife makes fun of me because I said one time, I'm like, you know, Cinderella is probably the most beautiful sound, has some of the most beautiful music I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, Someday My Prince Will Come, Miles Davis does a great version of that. Uh, too. So there's a lot of these like jazz covers of these types of songs. Get into stuff like, I guess more f folky, like tons of stuff by the Grateful Dead. Like Grateful Dead, I'm totally polarized on. Like a lot of the stuff, a lot of the stuff I just don't, I think other people do it better. I'm sure I'm going to get beat up on that one. But a lot of their like jamming stuff, like I would, I would take Allman Brothers personally, their jam stuff, jam stuff. Over Grateful Dead any day of the week. However, uh, and I like it. Don't get me wrong, but it's just I don't think it's as great as everybody thinks it is. Just my opinion. Uh, I I do, however, as far as their like folk stuff, a lot of stuff off American Beauty, for instance, that is like some of the finest music, in, in my opinion. So, uh, Ripple, Black Muddy River. That was not American Beauty, but um, whatever. Broke Down Palace. Uh, and tons of Jerry Garcia's like collaborations with like um, 
Sam Bush and um, uh, Grisman, David Grisman, that kind of stuff. I love that stuff. Uh, Back Into My Life Again, that's a Spencer Davis group song I love. Uh, Steve Winwood's a beast. He's like 16 on that album, I think. Uh, Here, There, and Everywhere by The Beatles. This Will Be Our Year by The Zombies. Uh, if you haven't checked out the album Odyssey and Oracle, it's a super underrated, great, great rock album by The Zombies. Um, Little Martha, Dwayne Allman, uh, Mood for a Day, Steve Howe, yes. Uh, classical Gas, Mason Williams, love like guitar instrumentals like that. And then we got like jazz pianists. I could listen to jazz piano all the time across the board, but like I really love the older stuff like Art Tatum, um, Errol Garner, Bud Powell, Oscar Peterson, all those dudes. And I kind of cut the list off there because like, my, my legs were going to sleep. <laughs> but so, all right, you got my opinion on what I think about music in the gym. You got my opinion on what, what I should listen to. And then you got a, whether you want it or not, you could always turn this off. You got a list of songs that I like that kind of represent each of my moods, so to speak. All right, so Rob Shoecraft, Three Store Fitness. Feel free to add to the list. I, if I have time, this is going to take me forever, but if I have time, I'll make a, I'll make a list of all these songs I said, and I'll try to link them to like a YouTube channel or so, a YouTube video that where they're, they're playing. I know some of them are pretty obscure, but I imagine, I'd imagine I could find them. All right, um, if you got a, like I said, if you got a, an, an opinion on this subject, chime in. If you want to add to some of your favorite tunes, drop them in there. <clears throat> I know I'm going to just, <laughs> well, whatever. Um, yeah, that's it. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great day.